Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God.
darkness you have poured out grace brought me out of darkness you have filled me with peace the giver of mercy you're my help in time of need Lord I can't help but see
morning, C3. We are the Sandoval's. Be strong. We got this. Hey, C3 family, and uh, I just want to say thank you and welcome to all of our guests. Maybe this is your first time tuning in to a worship service with us. We want to say welcome. Thank you for watching with us. We'd love to make contact and connection with you. You can do that by going to our website, sending us an email. We'd love to get to know you and uh, hopefully see you become part of the C3 family. We thank you and appreciate you so much. Thank you to all our leaders out there. Thank you to everyone that's uh, making these videos happen. I appreciate you so much. And welcome as we get into the Word of God. Um, I hope you tuned in last week to see what a fantastic job uh, the wonderful and lovely Miss Kim Peralt did. What an awesome job she did on bringing. And I feel like one of the things I loved about that message so much was I feel like she communicated the heart of what we're about so well, so well that we're all, we're co-laborers together to go out and to reach those that are disconnected from God. Those that are far from God, we want to see them brought close. And we realize that he uses each one of us to do that. Uh, we believe here at C3 Victory that we're here in Victoria because God has called us to work for the peace and the prosperity of the city. We know that this happens by as we know Jesus and we make him known to our circle of friends, our co-workers, our neighbors, all of that, but that God has called us to make a difference here in Victoria. It hasn't called us to be a social club, but to be a representation of the kingdom of God, to see the righteousness, the peace, the justice of God brought from heaven to earth in Jesus' name. Um, today, I want to speak to you on a little bit of a personal journey that I've uh, been on. And uh, the title of this message is Becoming Love. Becoming Love. And I believe it's not just my journey, but it's a journey that we all go through when we say yes to Jesus. It's the starting gun. And uh, and it's kind of the, the first click of that awesome roller coaster of being a follower of Christ and what that looks like and, and, and how he works inside of us. But I want to start this uh, message off with a bit of a personal story. And just in all honesty, this is going to be a little bit embarrassing for me. Uh, and I, I know we're all human. It probably happens to all of us. But uh, I'm just going to say I got Facebook offended. I got Facebook offended. Oh, it, it makes me cringe to watch. It makes me cringe the fact that this, this is going to be on Facebook for other people to watch. And uh, and I, I had to confess I got I, I got Facebook offended and, uh, you know, there's just so much stuff going around, but I, I read a post, and just so you know, it's not anyone that goes to her church, anything like that, so don't think I'm upset with you. Uh, you'd know it if I was. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, she um, put out something on, this person put out something on, on Facebook, and, uh, and as, as soon as I, I saw it, I tell you, it, it just like, it was so against the deepest part of what I believe and what I, I believe about humanity that I was like, what in the world is this person thinking? I'm, I just, I can't believe they said this and it's oh, it's so dumb and, and it, it's not taking in the whole picture of everything. And, you know, I just began to get instantly Facebook offended. And I'm, hey, listen, I'm sure I'm the only one that ever happens to, right? False. I read your comments. I know when you get upset about things. And, uh, and so I'm dealing with all this stuff and, uh, and I really feel like I'm right. And so I feel like I'm justified in my offense. I feel like I'm justified in, uh, in how I feel and, and my, my righteous anger and my indignation about what is right and what is wrong and uh, that sort of thing. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm like, I'm okay with being, uh, upset with this other person over their views and their beliefs. And FYI, they're not even a believer, by the way. They, you know, and so I'm just like, okay. And uh, and then I just felt the Lord begin to speak to me. And uh, I love how God is our Father, and what He does is He begins to father us in the ways of His family, and it, how His family operates, and how His family runs in in heaven, and how things were designed. And he, so He began to father me through this partnership of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and, and the Son, Jesus. 
and he did this by bringing two scriptures into my mind, and they just kind of they kind of stirred up from within me. And that's one of the ways you always know when God is talking to you is as things just kind of seem to well up from the spiritual will inside of maybe different scriptures you've read, our books, or things like that, or places where it's an accurate representation of who God is and his ways. He'll begin to pull that stuff up from inside of us. And this is the first thing he pulled up was out of Matthew 5. And... Uh, if you've ever read Matthew 5, you might know where I'm going with this. Matthew 5, verse 20 says this, But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That was the first scripture that he uh, he brought to me. And I kind of felt like with that one, he was just kind of laying the groundwork, like he's preparing something. Because if he would have just given me that one, I think I could have like just rested on my righteous and be like, yeah, God, done, check the box, I'm righteous, they're not. Uh, too bad for you, you're not getting into heaven. And I, I think I, I, I could probably have convinced myself that what was going on. But he just kind of began to layer a few things for me, I think so that I'd really get the point. And the second scripture was in Matthew 5, uh, 43. And it said this, he said, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor. Now that's a good law, I like that law. And hate your enemy, I'm down with that. But I say, uh-oh, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. I know right now you're just like, I do not like the direction of this sermon right now. He's about to get all up in my business. And it's, it's the Lord. It's not me. It's the Lord. Uh, pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children, true children of your Father in heaven. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt property tax, oh, not property tax, I'm sorry. Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So through those two verses that the Holy Spirit began to stir inside of my heart, he began to outline some things for me. And the first thing that he outlined to me is that God the Father's expectation for me and, and what he wants to bring out, uh, out of me is much greater than what was, represented, rep, uh, what was represented in the teachers and the Pharisees of the religious law. And so that was the first thing. And so he kind of began to speak to me. And he said, he said, Sam, I don't, I don't want you just to stand up and tell people what's right and wrong. Because that's kind of what the teachers of the religious law were really pros at, is they could stand up and they could tell everybody how they didn't measure up. They could say, this is what the law says, and this is what you're doing. And the law's here, and you're here. And there's always this gap. And he said, so he was speaking to me and he said, unless your righteousness, unless what you're about, he said, unless it's better than that, then you're never going to get into, into heaven because heaven isn't about just drawing these lines and saying, hey, hey, uh, God's up here and you're down here and you're never going to, that's opposite the gospel. The gospel actually says God is up here, we're down here, but, and this is the focus of the gospel, there is the man, there's, the, there's God made flesh, Jesus, who bridges the gap and connects the two. And so he began to really speak to me, and he said, I, as, as your father, and that you're my son, he said, I expect more from you than just getting angry about the wrong someone else is doing. I expect more from you. And what he began to impress on me is he said, my expectation for you is to love those people, to love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. To, and, and so he began to stir all of this up. And as he was doing this, this, the verse that really popped out of me from Matthew 5 was when he said, how are you different from anyone else? 
And I begin, I begin to think about that. And I begin to ask myself this question. And I hope you ask it to uh, yourself as well. How are you different? Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a follower of God. Okay, so you've got a title and you've got, you've got a label. I'm a Christian. Great. You've got a label, but how is your life different? And how is my life different? How am I loving people that are, that are rude to me, that are mean to me, that uh, try to uh, pull me down, that uh, are, are trying to, uh, that are dramatically opposed to my viewpoints? And, and listen, and, and, and it's a whole nother level of ridiculousness when they aren't even attacking you. They're just, uh, they're attacking an idea that you like. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like we're getting whipped and stoned in the streets here. They're just saying mean things. And so the question that gets posed to me by the Holy Spirit is, how are you loving your enemies? How are you different? How are you different? And then he began to stir inside of me this idea of becoming love and the fact that I am on a journey, and I hope you are too, of becoming love, of becoming love. Um, I think this is so important for today because becoming love is unnatural to human behavior. You know what's natural is to love those that love you. And when it's listen, it is easy to be nice to a person that's nice to everybody. It's easy to be kind when a person is kind and they're overwhelmingly loving and they're just they're they're doing good things for you. Everybody likes somebody like that. That's nothing special. But what is unnatural, and I would say what is supernatural, is to respond with the same type of love to when someone pours hate onto you, you have the ability to return love instead of hate. So in other words, when, when anger and, and hateful words and, uh, and, and, and stuff like that is, is poured on a, onto you, that you're able to return from a different source, a spirit of love, a spirit of forgiveness and a spirit of kindness. That is unnatural and that is supernatural. I think that's why in John 13, 35, Jesus said, by this, all people will know that you're my disciples. By this, ready this? And he's gonna outline the this. If you have love for one another, if you have love for, another, for one another, so not only is love this uh, the signal to the world that there is a good God and that there's, there's somebody out there, because a lot of people believe they're just out there on their own. But, and, and so love is, is like that signal fire. It's that bonfire on the beach for ships that are lost at, at sea, that need safe harbor. It is that massive lighthouse. It's that beacon of hope. Love is the signal to the world, not your opinion. Not, you know, what, what you researched and, and you're able to, to show other people. And, and, and all those things have their place. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not knocking that. But what I am saying is our primary purpose, biblically, our primary signal to the world is love. Is love. And I think this is really important because love is not only a signal to the world, but love and becoming love is key to your personal journey of self-discovery. I'm going to say that again. Becoming love is key to your personal journey of self-discovery. It's, it's not a good thing. It is an essential thing. I want to read another scripture to you because I believe there are some keys that we need to put into practice because when I say things like becoming love, I think we can get a little bit lost in that because I think there's, there could be a disconnect of, of people saying, listen, Pastor, I'm just not naturally a very loving person like this person over here. And let me, let me say to you, nobody's naturally a loving person. There, there are people that uh, are naturally uh, good natured and they don't want to fight. And so they've learned how to cover up a lot of things and they've learned how to put on different faces. But, but no one comes out of the womb loving Loving. We're all born with the sin nature, and we're all born with the need to become new creations on the inside by Jesus Christ. So everybody, just because it, it, some people show their anger and others are more passive-aggressive, listen, everybody has to learn 
to what it, what it means to become love. We all have to take that journey. So just because maybe that's not uh, the most natural thing for you, I wanna, I wanna tell you, it's not natural for anything. It's a, becoming authentic, true love is a supernatural event that starts inside of our hearts. First John 4, I'm gonna show you why. First John 4, uh, we're gonna start in verse seven. Beloved, and I love that. Wasn't, wasn't that a great way to start out a sentence? I think I, I might need to work that into my conversation a little bit, or it might just be, come off as weird. But beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And I, could, I love this. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us. A manifest, that means like we could see it, we could touch it, we could uh, visually relate to it. You know, humanity, we're such visual learners. We've got to see something to be able to step into something. And so God made his love where it can be seen, felt, touched, heard in the physical realm. And that was through Jesus. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God, that he loved us. See, the, the definition of love is it goes first. Love goes first. Love is initiated more than it is a response. So I don't wait for people to love me for me to love them. I love them first. I love them first. That's why you can love your enemies. Is because love goes first. If we love one another, oh, sorry, and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. In other words, the payment, what was, what was due, the cost of the sin of humanity. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. So in other words, let me, I, want, I want to say this to you from, from that verse. We are able to love from where we've allowed ourselves to be loved by God. So when I talk to you about this journey of becoming love, of becoming love, when I talk to you and the Holy Spirit talks to me about becoming love, I'm not talking about forced behavior. That's really important because that's false love. That's fake love. And, and that is disgusting. And nobody likes that. And what's weird is people can sense it. You can sense when someone's being fake nice to you and then they're just trying to get to the next grocery store aisle or they're just trying to get away from you because you're not wearing a mask or whatever the case might be, your own personal examples. But we can, we can sense uh, false love and fake love. But authentic love is so attractive. Authentic, authentic love, it just draws a person in. And, and it just, it's, it's, like something, it's like something is met on the inside of us. And that, does, that can't be forced. It has to be something from where we've experienced with God that then becomes natural when we pour it out to other people. Listen how Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. He says this in verse 18, 318. So all of us who've had that veil removed, what veil is he talking about? He's talking about the veil of the law. In other words, just trying to live life by being a good person. That veil has to come off. Because we, at some point you have to realize you're not ever going to be good enough to arise to the standard of Jesus. That it takes his spirit inside of us that meets those, uh, those requirements. So all of us who've had that veil removed can see and reflect, can see and reflect. Now that's a really powerful statement and we'll come back to it. The glory of the Lord, the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we're changed into his glorious image. Okay. His spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. I, I want you to understand something. God is love, right? We read that earlier. And in Genesis, we've been in Genesis like all through this year, 
in Genesis, it says, uh, humanity was created in the image of God, male and female, he created them both. So male and female, both of, uh, of those uh, genders, both of those are representations of God. Both of them, they're created in his image. And so you and I, whether you're male or you're female, both of us have been created in the image of God. And so you've been made in the image of love. So love is your authentic image. Love is your true self. Love is your hidden identity. You are a loving person. Maybe you've had so many experiences that you don't identify with love, and that's understandable. Or maybe you've been hurt, and so uh, you know you just you're scared to love, and you're scared to open up anymore, and that's understandable as well. But all of us have this image of God. All of us are carrying this this uh, this journey. All of us are carrying this passion to be who God has really made us to be. And as we're becoming love, then we're becoming our true selves. As we're following after what God has called us to do, then what, what happens is love becomes begins to flow out of us and our authentic true selves are being made known to the world. I want us to focus in on this part where we see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And I want you to think of it like a, a mirror. And how hard does a mirror have to work to reflect? Well, the answer is it doesn't, it doesn't work at all. It just does. It just does. You are naturally going to reflect what you're looking at the most. What you're spending your most amount of time in is what you're naturally going to reflect. And you don't have to work at reflecting it. You will do it naturally. The same thing has to do with becoming love. If you're struggling with, how do I love my enemies, like I still struggle with, then I have to get into that place where I understand I, if, if, if I'm going to love, if I'm going to be righteous the way Jesus said, hey, you've got to be righteous. You've got to be more than a person that just points out right and wrong. You've got to be willing to love people that are different than you. You've got to be willing and, and wanting to, to pour out that love when people are rude and hateful and disagreeable and obstinate and stubborn and all those sort of things that all of us can tend to be at times. We've got to be able to love those people and love them authentically and naturally. And that flows from what we've seen of God. That flows from what we've experienced of God. I can uh, directly correlate my ability to love people that are, are rude to me to my experience with God. If, if you've had a low experience with a loving father, if you've had a low experience with, with God your father, if you've had a, a just small amount of time and exposure to his goodness, to his mercies, to his grace, then you're only gonna love to a small degree. Jesus said it really well it, when he said, people uh, will, that have been forgiven much realize they've been forgiven of a lot. They will love a lot. And the reason for that is because they've connected with the mercy of God. And that's a whole nother sermon that I'm going to do in the future. But we have to be able to receive this working, this internal working of God, so that we can clearly reflect his image of love. And to the capacity that we've seen is the capacity that we can reflect. So the whole point of what I'm trying to get you to do this morning is I'm not trying to get you to try to be more loving, try to be a better person, try not to be so rude, n try not to flip people the bird when you're driving. The I I'm not getting you to try to do those different things. I want those things to flow from you naturally because of what you've seen about God. So I want you to focus less on what you're trying to be, and I want you to focus more on, on seeing God. Because the clearer that you see God, the more that we're in his word, the more that we're in his presence in worship. You know, our first value as a church is his presence. His presence is our first priority. Unashamedly, everywhere, all the time, at all costs, his presence is number one. Why? 
because if it doesn't come from his presence, if it doesn't come from the authentic part of who God is, then it's fake, it's false, it's lifeless, and it's powerless. If it comes from the person of God, if it comes from the presence of God, it's full of life, it's full of power, it's full of mercy, it's full of grace, it's full of justice, it's full of righteousness, it's patient, it's kind, it's forgiving, it is not rude, it is not proud, it does not envy, it does not boast, it does not seek its own ways, it forgives it easily, it keeps no record of wrongs. I could go on and on because all of that is the nature of God. And you and I were designed on this journey of becoming love to have authentic experiences with the person of God, the presence of God, the wonderful mercy of God, and be transformed by the Holy Spirit. He does it in you. He transforms your heart. And the next thing you know is you're naturally more of a loving person. That is called the good news. That is called the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we don't have to earn salvation anymore, that we don't have to force ourselves to be a good person, but you take that energy and you put it into building a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why our, our, our mission here is to know Jesus and to make him known, because we cannot make him known if we do not know him. We cannot become love without first touching love. We cannot release the power of God without being connected to the, to the person of God. And so we, we see all these different things. And I want you to know that, that you are on a journey right now. You are created to, uh, to receive love and you're created to be love. You were created in the image of love. You are created in the image of love. And God the Father wants to pour out his love on you personally. And then what's going to naturally flow from your life is that you're going to become a more loving person. And you're going to find within yourself the capacity to love your enemies. We're going to find within ourselves the capacity to pour out kindness when hate has been drenched all over us. And it will be a sign to people. You want to know how to change the world? Let's change hearts. Let's change hearts. Listen, we will never defeat injustice. We will never defeat racism. We will never defeat a division without love. Love is a heart changer. And that's what the, the world needs now is more love. And I won't go into the song, but I will, I will pray for you. Will you pray with me right now? Maybe this stirred in your heart. I believe it did because it's the word of God. And so let's, let's pray together and let's ask the Holy Spirit. Let's invite him to do a deeper work as he is changing us to become more like him, to become more in love with him. Father, we invite you as our good Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, would you continue to work inside of us and help us surrender to the areas that you've already been working as you're helping us become love? Lord, we, we believe in our hearts that humanity was created in your image, O oh God. And your image is an image of love. And Lord, we don't want to be a people that just act loving and, and, and try to be good people and nice people. God, we want to be authentically loving and we want to authentically like other people. And we want to be uh, authentically patient and authentically kind and, and loving and, and forgiving. God, we want this stuff to flow out of us. But God, we want it to flow from a connection with you. So would you help us? Lord, we believe that... Um, those that trust in you, from Psalm 34, will lack no good thing. Those that trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. And so, God, we put all of our trust in you, not in human effort, not in our own righteousness, not in our own goodness. God, we put all of our trust in you. I just feel the presence of God on your life right now. Take a moment. Take a moment. Let's not just, you know, watch an online sermon. Let's, let's take a moment to be in the presence of God with the person of God. I just feel him resting on me now, speaking to me now. Then I want to take this moment, and maybe if you're listening to this, maybe this if this is a, uh, uh, you're just listening to an audio version, or maybe you're listening to it later on Facebook, wh wherever you're at, and whatever's going on, and maybe you feel like you just have a real disconnection with God. Maybe you've uh, never surrendered to him. Maybe you didn't even believe in him. But man, you just, 
you just really feel like there's something stirring inside on your heart. And you feel like you want to give your life to Jesus. You feel called. You feel this pulling on the inside. You feel this drawing of love that that just seems so attractive to you. And, and you just want it so bad. Let me tell you something. What you're feeling is you're feeling the draw of your father to come home. That's what you're experiencing right now is, is God is a loving God. And he is your creator. And he is the father that wants to be with you forever. Jesus' intention for you is to never leave you and never forsake you. And so all we have to do is respond to his invitation. What you're experiencing right now is the drawing of a Holy Spirit, not emotion, not some psychological trickery, but the drawing of the Holy Spirit. And so let's respond to it. Would you just consider it and think about for one second about giving your life to the God that loves you, surrendering yourself to Jesus. If your immediate answer is yes, I want to pray with you right now. If you've got to think about it, and then you decide later, yes, you can watch this again and come back to this part because I want to lead you in a prayer. And uh, this prayer is just between really you and, your, and God. I'm just kind of helping you. And um, it's just a way of us telling God that we're over ourselves. We're tired of doing it our way, and we want to do it his way. And we're presenting ourselves to him. And that's what he really wants. Listen, don't get wrapped up in uh, your current packaging. Sometimes we say, God, he, he won't want me. He knows what I did last night. He knows what I did a few minutes ago. He knows what I've said. He knows all. Listen, he does know all that stuff. And he chose to pay for it. He chose to die for it. He chose to give himself up for you just as you are right now, thousands of years ago. And he still makes the same decision every day. He still makes the same decision. He bears the same scars for a reason. Right now in heaven, seated at the right hand of God, he bears the same scars because he'd make the same decision. So let's, let's pray. If that's, if that's you, would you repeat after me? And let's just surrender ourselves anew to Jesus. Living God, I give myself to you. Everything I am, all my past mistakes, all my failures, all the things I'm embarrassed about and ashamed about, everything, I give it to you. And I receive from you your Holy Spirit. I receive you into my life, making me a new person. I believe that the old is gone and that the, the new is here. I surrender all that I am to you, and I receive all that you are inside of me. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. And thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe for you as a rededication, you prayed it maybe when you were little, but kind of feel like you strayed from that, would you go on our website, www.c3victory.com, and when you get to that homepage at the bottom, it said, it says, I've decided to uh, follow Jesus, and um, you click on that, because we don't want to just lead you in a prayer, we want to help you realize all the potential you have in discovering everything the, the incredible brilliance that's wrapped up inside of you. We want to walk with you on that journey. We can't do it all for you, but we can be there with you as the Holy Spirit does the work in you. And that's really what we want to do. We believe that you've, you've been created for so much more. First of all, a relationship with the living God. And second, that there's a purpose for your life that's very important for the world today. And we don't know what it looks like, but God will show you. One of my favorite things I've read in Jeremiah, I think it's 33.3, and it says, Come to me, and I will tell you. Ask me, and I will tell you secrets about the future that you do not know. And I think that's so exciting because there's secrets that God only wants to tell you. And there's secrets and things he wants to do in your life that will make a difference in the world today. So please, go to the website, 
send us an email, send us a comment if you made that decision so that we can walk with you and love you on your journey. God bless you. Let's all continue. Let's not just make this a sermon, but let's all continue to allow the Holy Spirit to unlock those things inside of us as we're becoming love. God bless you. We love you. Hey guys, as we get ready to give this morning, I want to share with you around the idea of stewardship. Stewardship is a very biblical concept and what it involves is that everything that we are given and provided by God, we are meant to do something with. So let's look in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 this morning and beginning in verse 14, this is the parable of the three servants. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. The master again said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you more. Let's celebrate together. The servant with the one bag of silver said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, Why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I I could have gotten some interest back on it. Then he ordered, take the money from the servant and give it to the one with 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they have been given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. For those who do nothing, what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, that's a pretty serious outcome when we're talking about stewardship and what God has given us to steward. You know, everything that we have comes from God. Our finances, every provision that we have right now financially has come from God. And what we are called to do as believers is to say, God, how can I multiply what you have put in my hands? How can I expand your kingdom by what you have given me? I think right now in the world, in the tumultuous times we're living in church, it is so easy to get into fear. It's so easy to get into a hoarding mentality, to take care of your own family, to buy what you think you might need, to forecast for the future, to buy things to make yourself feel good. And listen, God has called his children to be expansive to be a people who multiply his goodness across the earth. And we do this through our finances, through giving generously of what God has provided for us. Don't let yourself slip into a hoarding mentality. Don't let yourself slip into, I'm thinking about me and my own and taking care of us. Use this opportunity, give your tithes, give your offerings, give beyond the church to those around you, Give into your community and allow God to put more into your hands so you can bless even more people. We love you guys and God bless you.